Looking to get that awesome halftone effect in Procreate? Well, there's two main ways to do it, but they yield very different results. Let's talk about this. Hey y'all, I'm Brad Woodard. Ever since the Procreate 5X update back in September, I think it was, you're now able to add a halftone effect to any of your finished artwork. Well, technically you were always able to use halftones in Procreate, you just had to download your own halftone brushes. So now you just have a simple halftone filter built in. So which one should you use, the brushes or the filter? Well, of course, both of them have value, so let me show you how to use both, then you can decide which one is best for your next project. First off, halftones are basically an optical illusion. They're tricking your eyes to see what's actually a bunch of little teeny tiny dots as one smooth, complete image the further you move back. And the reason why they created this, or this was even invented, was for things like this, photographs, things that were very complex with lots of tonal qualities to them that was very, very hard to reproduce. For example, this is a colored photograph, so which would be very, very hard because you don't want to print every single color known to man to recreate this. So they came up with a process called the four color process. And so they have these four main colors that they use, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, which is CMYK and they use only those colors, so if you zoom in, you'll only see those colors multiplied on different layers on top of each other to recreate pretty much any color you'd ever want. But the trick is it had to be in conjunction with the shape and the size of these different dots. So a really good example of that would be looking at a gradient here. So even if it didn't have color, you still had the tonal quality issue when you're printing. So this way you could actually just change the size of the dots and the distance apart from each other to show lighter colors, you have them further apart and smaller, to the more dense colors, or if you didn't more densely pack those dots, it became darker or more saturated. So if you back up here, you can kind of see how they start to blend together. And it works way better off the screen than on the screen if it was printed. <laughs> you get these weird little artifacts here, but you get the idea. The halftone filter in Procreate can be found in your adjustments panel. And you'll find it here near the bottom labeled halftone. When I tap on it, it'll pop up saying pencil or layer. Pencil just means you can kind of paint in where you want that filter to be applied on your illustration. And layer just means it's applied to the entire layer. I typically like to just break things into layers, so that's what we're gonna work with. At the bottom, you'll see that it says full color, screen print, and newspaper. It's giving you different options uh, within the halftone filter. And uh, the problem I have with it is that when you tap on them, there's no preview. I wish it would start at like 50%. If you look at the very top, it says 0%. Um, so you actually have to tap on the screen and drag to the right to see that percentage go up, which also means it increases the size of those dots. So at that point, you can just slide it to the left or the right to kind of get the desired effect that you want for your art. Now there is one issue with this, this filter is flattened on your original image. So you need to make sure that this is separate that you, or that you have a duplicate image so that you're not just doing it to this one. Because if you want to go back later, now that I've jumped out, for example, now that I've jumped out of this uh, halftone window, I'm going to go back to it. And if I, I want you think you want to go back and just adjust it, correct? Well, if I do that, it's just doubling it up. So it's using that already halftone image as the base and then it's building on another halftone on top of it. So you don't want that. So make sure that you separate uh, these and make sure you have them on separate layers. Uh, otherwise, it's gonna be a kind of a nightmare to go back and fix. Okay, I'm gonna get back in there. Halftone, oops, halftone layer. And we gotta just talk about what this is doing. So right now it's doing the typical halftone, uh, color halftone effect where it's giving you the, it's only using CMYK and it's uh, you know adjusting the size and, uh, of those, those, those dots. But the thing is, is it just keeps your original image underneath it. So it keeps the colors very, very vibrant. Now this is great if you just wanna have the aesthetic, right? If you're just going for the aesthetic of, of it being half tony, um, it's actually really cool. If you zoom back out a little bit, it looks actually pretty rad. So I'm not against it. I'm not against it. I, I just think if you're actually gonna try to do the actual um, screen print technique, which would be these latter two, uh, let's start here on screen print, you'll notice it's a little bit different. There's not that image underneath and it's fully making them out of just those little dots. So it makes it so it's less vibrant. Um, 
and you're probably gonna be wanting to stick closer to the smaller side of your halftones, uh, of the dot size, so that it looks more accurate to what you're doing. But then again, if you wanted to zoom it up to, to make it feel just a little bit more pop art, you can definitely do that as well. But the big problem I have with this is if you really want to use this to screen print, you can't because these all four colors need to be on separate layers and this filter does not separate them by layer. So it's all one image and really won't help you in screen printing or anything like that. But it's a cool effect. And then you have the newspaper effect, which just goes, converts it to black and white. And this one can actually be really helpful. If you have an image that, um, like all of these, if this is kind of an after effect, you've already created the artwork, now you just want to create the effect uh, of it being halftoned. Uh, this one actually probably the most functional because you could screen print this uh, because it's just dots. And then you could, you know, adjust that how you want. But uh, yeah, so there you go. So, so th those are what the, that's the built-in uh, filter that Procreate has given you and it's, it's pretty good. Now, what if you want to have more control over the halftone process? Maybe you want to be coloring with halftones and choosing the grunginess or uh, changing what colors or what, or, or you even want to use your uh, screen tones as an actual method of printing. So you want them all layered and you want to prep this for print. You can do that with brushes. Now there's lots and lots of amazing brush packs online that you can purchase and, and download here for, for Procreate. But I typically use these ones from Retro Supply. They have the best halftone brushes that I've found and uh, especially with colors. I love their Color Lab brush pack. So let me show you the difference and how you would use brushes in Procreate for this halftone effect. So I'm gonna go and show you what it looks like. Let's see. This is what it looks like when you do the typical screen print filter here in Procreate. Uh, it works just fine, but it's not layered, so you couldn't actually print with it. Um, it's more just for the aesthetic. But if I'm gonna be able, if I want to, if it's just an aesthetic thing, then I want to be able to choose those colors. And it may look very, very different, which they do when I did it, <laughs> when I did it, um, like this. So this is Color Lab. This is what I use to make these. And it means every single color, uh, all four colors are on different layers and they use different brushes for each one. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a recipe that you have to follow. You kind of pick the color that you want on here and then it tells you which brushes to use and which color. So yellow four, well, let's, let's do this right here. Yellow four and blue three. So if I go take this off, I wanna make that color. I would just go to my brush pack over here and let's do my color halftone, like a yellow four. Change that color like that. And if I want to add another layer, I'd need to multiply it on top of it because that's how you get the different colors. And let's say we needed a, let's go back to the blue. And let's say we wanted like a blue, what'd I say? Blue two, I'm guessing <laughs> what it was. You kind of, if you want like a green color, so then you scoot back and you can see that that color turned out the way it did. So I, I like, I like using that. I like the control. It's very, very slow. The process is a lot slower. So just, just know that. Um, if I go to my, layer panel you can see all the different layers that i've had to make and they're all multiplied on top of each other uh, to create this image so a lot more work you may need to do some clipping masks and things but uh, the result is uh, just so so much richer i feel uh, especially if i'm going to use this as like a if i want to make this as a piece of art not just a little gimmick that uh, like a halftone gimmick effect over top of it so that's one thing i use i use color lab awesome pack Another one is Duplatone. This is, I don't know why I did this version. Maybe we should just look at a black and white. There we go. So for single color uh, half tones, you want to be able to vary obviously the size, the darker or the more compact and larger those, those circles are, the more, um, the, the darker it is or the lighter on the other spectrum of that. But uh, I like that you can pick between grungy and you can pick between clean. So you have clean lines down here, or, or clean lines, <laughs> clean dots right here. Um, and then you have the same on these ones. So the difference between these ones is this one's a shader. So you can go in and what's really neat about that is uh, like, again, this is all going back to control. I love these kind of brush packs because I can control um, all this on my own. So let's say 50%. If I press really hard, it's gonna be, uh, obviously those are gonna be darker and bleed into each other a little bit more. But the lighter I draw, You'll notice that those 
little dots are a lot smaller and, and further apart so you can create your own gradients as you're drawing. How cool is that? I love that. So then if you need it to be darker, just go up a couple steps and do the same thing. So press a little bit harder and it's going to build right on top of that. It's not going to double over. It's just going to build right on top of those existing dots and increase their size. So anyways, that's why I like Duplitone. Um, that one's great for doing just monochromatic um, artwork and it just gives you the shading that you want. It's a really cool option. But yeah, so you can take a look at them. Do you want, do you want something that uh, feels a little bit more custom? Let me change one more looking at here. Like this. So this is the, the existing artwork. Or did you want something like, like this? where you can kind of have full control over it. And that just depends on you. You get to pick uh, what you need for whatever piece of art you're doing. Well, there you have it. That's how I use Halftones in Procreate. There's two very different methods that I showed you, but um, they both have their purposes. And uh, if you need something very quick and easy, and you're not really caring about the artistic quality of the Halftone look, then the best way to do that would just be using the filter there in Procreate. It's very fast and it also just applies it after the artwork's already done. So you don't have to think about it till the very end. It's just a filter. Now, if you wanted to be a little more thoughtful in the process and you really care about how that that uh, halftone looks and how the overall, you know, for aesthetics purposes, then you definitely want to go the brush route. Now, the cons to that is obviously it's a little bit it's harder, it takes a lot longer time, and you have to purchase some brushes to do that. But um, the reward is that it's a very custom piece of art and it's very deliberate the way that you're using your halftones. So it just depends on what your needs are. Thank you guys so much for watching this video today. I hope it helped. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do so. And if you enjoyed this video, drop it a like. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video.